everyone doing today? Okay, that's, oh, I love that. That's progress. Um, so, so, here's what's gonna happen. First off, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, so thank you all for being here. Um, what's so cool is that, of course, your teachers supported you in coming today. Um, what is today? So today we have the opportunity. And everyone's not looking at me, so. So today we have the opportunity to hear an amazing story from an amazing woman. Um, with the Dream Project, your Dream Director and your Dream Squad, we're presenting to you hashtag My Story Matters. And so Friday, we're doing a really big showcase for you at lunch. So it's going to be really cool and exciting. And there might be cotton candy, just saying. Um, so today's opportunity is one in which uh, it was provided by Ms. Lewis, who actually just stepped out, um, where we wanted to hear the story of someone who could relate to you all. Um, talking about their stories in the DMV area, but also what it means to dream. If you have a dream, raise your hand. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So I'm a step talk. I don't dream. And I want you all to take this opportunity to embrace and take in the woman that is known as Miss DC, Miss Meredith Iguatu. Iguatu. but also how it relates to your story. Everybody in here has a story. Everybody in here has gone through things in their life. You're now in high school, preparing for college, and you're creating your story. And the most important thing that each and every one of you can do today is make sure you're creating a good story for yourself. Make sure it's good chapters. Make sure that you are on the road to success. So I'm gonna share my story with you. When we're done today, remember Twitter. You can follow me, Meredith Iguatu, E-G-W-U-A-T-U. And it's hashtag, I am a king, I am a queen. Because everybody in here is a queen or a king, and it's up to you to make sure that when you walk away from Cardozo High School that you know you are a queen, that you know you are a king. So first, I'm gonna <laughs> talk to you a little bit about my story, and we're gonna talk about the importance of who you're choosing to be your friend, who's in your circle. That's one of the most important things and decisions that you can make right now. You are the average. I want you to think about this. Everybody, I want you to take a second to think about who are your five closest friends. What are they like? Are they smart? Do they have good values? Because if they don't, you are the average of your five friends. You are the average of your five friends. I want you to think for a second, who are your five friends? And think about what they're like, and that's probably what you're like. So I hope you like your friends. I want you to come up here for a second. Yeah. What's your name? Davina. Davina? Yes. Tell me, who is your closest friend? I want there. This one right here? And what do you like about her? Why is she, what is the most important quality that you like in her? She's different. She's different. She's different. She's unique. In her own so, way. In her own way. <laughs> so what do you like about her being different? She's confident in, in who she is, even though she is different than others. Okay. Come here real quickly. <laughs> Who's your closest friend? Um, one's right there. And what do you like about her? He's a stranger. So y'all like the uniqueness of your group. Okay, thank you, y'all can sit down. None of them said that they liked somebody because they were popular. Friends are not gonna choose to be your friend because you are popular. And I'm gonna give you a really big wake up call. Being popular in high school should not be even the top of your priority list. You wanna know why? Because when you leave high school, it doesn't matter. 
You might be the most popular person here. Everybody's calling you, everybody's Facebooking you, everybody is tweeting you. But when you leave high school, you're gonna go to a big, big place called college. And whether you were the all-star quarterback or whether you made straight A's, there's a lot of other students making straight A's and there's a lot of other quarterbacks there. So it doesn't matter. What matters is that you're surrounding yourself with people who are going to love you, who are going to uplift you, and encourage you on the path that you're going. Come here, you in the corner. Me? Yep, come here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your closest friend in here? <laughs> and why is that your closest friend? Because she's a funny person. She's encouraging. She's encouraging. So that's exactly what I'm telling you guys is that everybody's looking for you to go sit down. Everybody's looking for you. Meredith, <laughs> Julia, nice to meet you. At the end of the day, you're going to choose your friends based on values. And if you want to grow your friendship and grow your circle, you need to make sure that you're implementing good values, that you're standing up for what's right, that you're encouraging each other to get in small groups and get the A in the class. If you have a friend who's struggling, making a C or a D, lift them up. Hold their hand and say, come on, let's go study after school. How, how many hours do you think that y'all spend on Facebook, Twitter, and social media? How many hours do you think that y'all spend on average? How many hours do you think everybody spends a day? One hour? I think it's more than an hour. You spend 12 hours. Okay. How many hours do you think the average person spends on social media a day? 24 hours? 24 hours all day? The average student is spending four to five hours a day on social media. And I want you to guard yourself from going down that same path because you might have the most likes, the most followers, the cutest pictures on Facebook and Twitter, but what you don't have is the real friendships. What you're not doing is investing, meeting a friend at a coffee shop, taking a friend to your house, make, making students, making friends that are students that can help you study. What you're not doing is spending time with your parents. What you're not doing is spending time with your family. What you're not doing is getting involved in your community. What you're not doing is going to tutoring after school to make sure that you're getting the grades that you need. So that all that time you're investing in social media, and I'm not against social media, I'm on social media, but I block my time because I have more important things to do. And as Mrs. DC, I could be tweeting everybody, I could be Facebooking everybody, I could be uploading pictures all day. But what am I doing to myself? I'm not growing, I'm not chasing my dreams. So I want you to think about that. When I was in high school, I made the decision to choose friends that were not good for me. That's why I'm telling you all today not to do the same thing that I did. When I was in high school, I wanted to try to be popular, and I wasn't. I was very smart. So I was not popular because I was spending my time in school. And in a try to drive to become popular, I lost the greatest values of myself. Getting involved with people who didn't respect me, who didn't appreciate me. If anybody tries to get you to do something that is not according to your value system, then you don't need to be friends with them. And you need to set your values today. I want you to set your values today. What are the top three most important things that, that are important to you in terms of values. And if somebody comes into your life and wants you to do anything against those values, then they don't need to be your friend. So those values will protect you from having people in your life who are not good for you. What are your three most important values? Tell me. Kindness. Kindness. Encouraging. Encouraging. 
One more. Smart. Kind, encouraging, and smart. So if somebody comes into your life and they're not kind to you, if somebody's coming into your life and they don't want to help you make smart decisions, and if somebody comes into your life and they're not encouraging to you, then they don't need to be your friends. And that goes for each and every one of you in here. I also want to talk about challenges. How many of you have ever had a challenge before in your life? Just a couple of us, okay? Nobody else has had challenges, but us three right here have had a couple challenges. Raise your hand if you've had a challenge in your life. <laughs> okay. Well, if you have not had a challenge yet in your life, I encourage you to do something different because if you're not being challenged, you're not on the right path. You're too comfortable, you're too coherent. You right here, asleep. Come up here. Come up here. You don't wanna come up here? Okay, that's okay. Challenges are something that we all go through in life. And I went through some terrible challenges graduating from high school, going into my freshman and sophomore year of college. My freshman year in college, I made a 4.0 GPA at Texas Tech University, which is the highest GPA that you can make, straight A's. My sophomore year in college, I was about to get kicked out of the university because of my grades. My grades were so bad, and you wanna know why? Because it wasn't that I wasn't smart, it's that I wasn't choosing the right people to get involved with. It's because I was making poor decisions and I was choosing the wrong friends. And that's why I say your friends shape who you are. It's important that you choose smart, nice people to be your friends. So I made up my mind I wasn't going to fail college. So I started to change my complete mindset. My parents said, if you do not get it together, then you're out of school. We're taking you out of school. I had to get it together for myself, and I knew that there were great things in me. I knew that I was a queen, and I knew that despite the mistakes that I had made, because we're all making mistakes, we all treat people the way that we shouldn't treat people. We all choose maybe to be with the wrong friends. We might fail a class, but it's never too late to turn it around. It's never too late. No matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, no matter any choice that you made, even if it was this morning, even if it was yesterday, even if it was two years ago, one year ago, it's never too late to turn it around today. And that's the decision that I made. I made the decision that I was not going to fail, that I was not going to go down in a downward spiral. I was gonna stand up for what was right. So I started getting back in the library. I was so serious about changing my life that I would spend the night in the library sometimes. I would spend the night in the library. I would study all day and all night. And you know what? I ended up graduating with a 3.8 GPA which is almost a perfect GPA at a very prestigious university. And you say, okay, what does that mean? What does that mean that you had great grades, okay? What can you do with that? Well, what I did with that is I moved to Washington, D.C. I had never been to Washington, D.C. I had never been to the East Coast. I was from Texas. I had never visited the East Coast. And I made up my mind, I had great things in me. I made up my mind, I was a queen. No matter the mistakes I made, no matter the bad grades I had gotten, no matter anything that had happened, I knew I was a queen and I decided to move to DC. I had nothing. I had no, I had no money, I had nowhere to live. I had nothing in my back pocket. And I packed the back of my SUV, I had a car, with all my clothes and I took a risk to come out here. Six weeks later, I got hired to be a research analyst covering the Department of Defense, Department of Homeland Security, Department of Army, and you might not think that that is that big of a deal, but it is because it taught me everything that I need to know to be successful in life. 
Two years later, I became the director of business development for an information technology firm, providing IT services to the United States government. And then one year later, I became Mrs. District of Columbia. What if I would have made up my mind that because I was failing in school, because I was making poor decisions, what if I would have made up my mind that that was the road that I was going to go on? Where would I be today? Where would I be today? Yeah, I would. Where do you think I would be today? Would I be in a good place? Where do you think I would be today? You. Where would I be today if I made up my mind that because I did bad, I was going to continue to do bad? I would have been in bad places, doing bad things. Why would I do that to myself? So everybody in here needs to make up your mind. You are a queen. You are a king. You need to think of yourself that way. If people don't treat you like a queen, with respect and kindness, if they don't treat you like a king with respect and kindness, then they're not for you. And by king, I don't mean being arrogant. Kings and queens are not arrogant people. They're not arrogant people. They're kind to everybody they meet. But they stand with their shoulders back, they stand with a confidence, and they know they're going places. They know that there's something in me. I'm going places. I'm going places. I want everybody in here to tell me, on the count of three, I'm going places. I want you to yell it. It might sound silly, but I need you to make up your mind. You're going places. You're going to high places. It's not too late to make up your mind today. So I'm going to have you keep yelling it until I hear everybody yell it. One, two, three. I'm going places. That's right. We're going to say it one more time. We're not just going places. We're going to high places. One, two, three. I'm going to high places. That's right. You've got to make up your mind. you got to know I'm going to high places. And when you make up your mind about something, you will go to high places. I also want to talk to you about who you think you are on the outside has very little to do with those high places that you're going. No matter what insecurities, what flaws you think that you are, a king or a queen is still a king or queen no matter what they look like on the outside. It has nothing to do with where you're going in life. I'm gonna show you something that this is how I dress at home on a normal basis. Basketball shorts. A t-shirt. This is all out of my closet. I have two pairs of tennis shoes that I wear, a Nike I work out in. This shoe's from Walmart. This shoe's from Walmart. But it doesn't make me any different. It doesn't make me or change who I am. Whether I wear this shoe or this shoe, I still walk around like I'm a queen and you better treat me like a queen. Whether I wear a basketball shorts or a nice skirt, I walk around, I'm going places. I treat people with kindness. I treat people with respect. And what I wear does not define where I'm going. When I moved to DC, remember I told you I had nothing? I had nothing. But because I made up my mind where I was going, I went places. And whether I was wearing this or wearing this, it didn't change me. So a lot of you students, and you don't have to tell me who you are, have fed into a lie that what you're wearing, the car that you drive when you get older or even now, how much bling and everything that you have is going to define who you are. I know a lot of people, I'm Mrs. DC, I know a lot of people who have a lot of luxurious things and they're not happy. They're not happy. So you better make up your mind. It's not wrong to be ambitious and want nice things, 
But whether you have them now or whether you don't, it shouldn't define the king and queen that each of you are. I'm gonna tell you something else, and I wasn't planning on saying this, but I'm gonna go ahead and let you all know. A lot of what you see on television is a lie. I have been on set with a cameraman, and I have been on set to view the filming of music videos. I have been there. I used to work for a modeling agency. I wasn't in the video, but I have seen it. Do you know that they come? They take, let me have a rapper. You're a rapper, come here. Come sit right here. They take the rapper, they tell him to sit down. His car is rented. Shows up in a rental car, which means he does not own it. There are three people that come to him. They have a box of jewelry. They put the jewelry on him. They put the lights, camera, action on him. They put the models around him. They film. Lights, camera, action is over. You know what happens? They take that jewelry off. They take the car back. The girls go home, and he's sitting there just like that. So if you're gonna, you can go sit down now. If you're gonna believe that that lie that you see on television, you better know the truth about it first. It's not true and it's not real. And a lot of those people are unhappy because of the decisions that they have made. So you need to define who you are today. How much time do I have? 10 minutes. Now let's talk about the road to success. Let's talk about the path to success. I want to hear from somebody today, raise your hand, I want, I want three people to volunteer to come up here and tell me the decisions that they're going to make to be successful, given what I've told you. I need somebody to volunteer. I want you in the back, the red hair. Come on, don't be shy. Don't be shy, come up here. I want you. Come here. You're going places, I can tell. Come here. Why? Why don't you want to come up here? You're successful. I need you to come tell me why. Come here. You're the definition of success. Come up here. Why? Why? I'll, I'll talk to you. Come here. Come on. Okay. Come up here. Come up here. Okay, talk to me. What is it that you want to do with your life? What is, what is your dream? You don't know. You need to decide and think about it. What are the gifts that you have? You don't know what gifts you have? Well, let me tell you. Everybody in here, including you, has gifts. You, are, you have special gifts that nobody else has. But it's time for you to start taking the time, and before you go to bed tonight, I want you to write down the five gifts that you have and circle the number one gift. Because you are a special person. You are a gifted person, and nobody in this room has what you have. You were created like this. Nobody else was created like you. So only you can execute those gifts that you have and those special talents because you are a queen I want you to come up with a game plan of what you're gonna do to be successful and make up your mind that you're a queen today are you a queen I think you are too you're a king. all right what is your dreams what is something that you want to do to be successful in life what is your passion Okay, why is it money? Okay, this is the lie that I am trying to expose to you. <laughs> let me tell you. You said money don't buy anything now? It, it does not, and let me tell you why. It does attract the wrong women. As a man, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. As a man, 
If you think I'm going to go make a lot of money and I'm going to lead with my money to attract a woman, you're going to attract the wrong one. Because if you ever lose that money, the woman's gone too. It is not going to work. Because let me tell you, you need a woman when you become a man who is going to honor you and respect you. But money does not gain respect. It doesn't gain respect. Character gains respect. So if you lead with your money and it's not a respectful attribute, you're going to end up with a disrespectful wife. Do you want to have a woman who disrespects you? Hold on. Do you want to have a woman that disrespects you? Do you want to have a woman who doesn't honor? As a man, a man is supposed to be the, the head of his home. How can you be the head of your home if all you're doing is worrying about money and not worried about your family? And how can you be the head of your home if you have a woman in your home who doesn't respect you? Let me tell you, I'm married. My husband, when we were dating, he made, I think it, he was a, a RA for, in college. What that means is that you work to pay for your tuition and you get a little bit of money on the side to pay your bills. $300 a month is what he was making. I don't know if any of you know what that's like, but $300 a month doesn't get you much. This was in college. He went on to go get a career. He's not the wealthiest man in Washington, D.C., but he's still married to Mrs. D.C. Why do you think that he was able to get a woman that respected him, that honored him, without making a whole lot of money. He's, he provides for us, he takes care of us, but he's not rich. How do you think that he did that? Because he had character. Because I respected the character of who he is. The character of who he is. He was honorable, he respected me. He led us to church. He did the things that I was looking for in a husband. And the amount of money that he makes, whether he makes millions or whether he makes $45,000 a year, doesn't bother me either way. I would stay married to him no matter, if he lost his job and he was making no money, we would figure it out and we would work through it. And that's the kind of wife that you want. You don't want a wife who wants you for your money. You don't want that, trust me. Because there's another man out there who's making more money. No matter how much you make, there's still another man making more money. And if the only reason that she's with you is money, there's still, there's, she'll, she'll leave you for the next one. Go ahead. It's not, uh, but what if, what if, you know, some people got money. Some girls come with the money not like because, not because they like the money sometimes, because they like the dude who can take care of themselves and take care of them too. Like, yeah. But that's character. <laughs> let me go. Let me go ahead and let me go ahead and answer this. Let me answer that. That if you as a man want to make money and provide for your woman, that is much different than trying to attract a woman for money. Wanting to provide for a woman is much different than wanting to attract a woman with money. They're two different things. Go ahead. Okay. These days, these girls think everything's supposed to come out a man pocket hole. You go everything for them, you bury everything on them. I'm chasing money for it. So you're saying, let me repeat this really quickly because I know we have to wrap up. You're saying that a woman, and I don't know how we got onto this from our conversation, <laughs> But you're saying that, that these girls want you to make money and be able to provide, take you on a date. I, that, that is, again, a character. That's a character thing. We're going to get off this topic. I want to talk to you really quickly in the back about being an independent woman. Ladies, I want you to listen to this because we've been talking about the guys. It's OK to be ambitious. It's OK to go after studies, and I want to end on this really quickly because this is an important note. Science, technology, engineering, and math. 
STEM education. I want you to really take the time with your teachers, with your parents, to look into those fields of education and the reason why you say you want to make money, you say you want to make money, in here they say they want to make money. Science, technology, engineering and math, I can tell you as a woman in technology that that is where this country needs people the most and there's a lack of them. So if you can be excellent in STEM education, you can really go places. Are we done? Oh, 12 minutes. Okay. Uh, I got a question. How do you become Miss Abusive? Yes. Why don't you go? Why don't y'all go sit down and let me answer questions? How did I become Mrs. DC? I became Mrs. DC. I had no interest in doing beauty pageants, but what I was interested in is being where I am right now. I wanted to come tell each of you my story that even if you fail, you can succeed. And to not be afraid of entering education subjects like science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education. Right now, I'm a woman in technology and I can tell you, I go to events and I have pictures of this on my Twitter. You can see it, I go to events and there is no minorities, there is no women. There is hardly any minorities. There is hardly any women. Yet, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education are the highest paying fields. They're the highest paying fields. And not only are they high paying, but you can make a difference in your country. You can make a difference for corporations. You can be the next CEO. You can be the next engineer. You can be transforming the way that our federal government, the United States Department of Defense, does business. And to say it's impossible, it's not. Because I'm a Hispanic woman in technology. My videographer, Ian, is an African-American male in technology, living the dream. This man right here, back here, is living the dream. He's in technology, he works from home. He's about to travel to the World Cup and go to Brazil. He can do whatever he wants to do because he was responsible, because he has character, and because he pursued a career in technology. It's not impossible, but there needs to be more minority students, more women standing up for these fields because you can write your own ticket. If you are an African American male, an African American woman, a Hispanic male, a Hispanic woman, and you go to a company and you know what you're talking about, you've studied hard, you've made the good grades, you can write your ticket. They say, I want to pay you $100,000. You say, no, I want you to pay me $125,000. And I can guarantee you that you will be successful. I guarantee you that they will increase that check. So while you're right now debating the fields that you want to go into, you want to have power, you want to have authority. You want to be able to provide for your families. You want to be able to take care of yourself. You want to be able to be ambitious. I really encourage you all to think about going into those fields. How many of you guys spend time on video games? Just one? Okay. You're going, it's okay, I'm not mad. They say that guys who play video games are well suited to be successful in mathematics, engineering, and technology. I'm not mad. So you said, you said if your husband uh, lost everything, you, you would go, you love him that much? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that, he didn't lead with his money. He led with his character. He led with his character. The question was, if my husband lost everything, would I sit by his side? Absolutely. But unfortunately, when you leave with, lead with your money, it's not the same situation. So what time of currency you got? I'm sorry? What type of what? Oh, career. He's in technology. Oh, character. Character. He, the character that he has is that he is very honorable. He treats me with respect. He opens my car door for me. 
so I can get out of the car. He opens the door for me. Oh, you got more money now? Does that, does that, does that cost anything to open a door? Does that cost anything to, to treat me with respect? To That's be polite? To do that. oh, That's good that you know that. You met him, you had him more than him? <laughs> we, we were in the same boat. We were in college. We were in the same boat. But we do. We have a daughter. The other character values that he illustrated was that he was going to love me and be committed to me. Commitment is important in relationships, to your parents, to your friends. Commitment is a character value that's important, but you need to make sure you're committed to the right people. You need to make sure you're committed to the right things. As Mrs. DC, what do I do? I have the amazing opportunity to go to schools, to speak to students, to encourage students using my story as a testimony. I get to go raise funding for, for patients with leukemia, cancer patients, United States veterans, raising funding for the veterans to make sure that those who have sacrificed their lives for our country, which is why you're here today, that they're taken care of. There's people in our country who have lost their lives. Fathers, brothers, sisters, mothers, wives, who have lost their lives so that you can be here today. And I hope that you don't take advantage of that. I hope you don't take advantage of that. I hope you know that somebody has sacrificed their life for us to be free in this country. There's a lot of countries that don't have the same freedom. I'm gonna open up the last five minutes for questions. Who has a question? What made you um, enter the competition? So why did I enter the competition? I entered the competition because I have been very passionate for a long time about raising leaders in America. In the United States of America, there's so much potential. And students like you, that I believe in, and I wanna look at you and say, you are amazing. You are amazing. You are going places. I believe in you. That's why I did this. Because she is going places. I can guarantee you she's going places. I can guarantee you she's really gonna do great things for her community, for her nation, in college, that's why I did Mrs. DC. That's why I competed. Any other questions? When I was competing for Mrs. DC, did I ever want to quit? You know, I, I didn't. But there are times in life I, I have wanted to give up. Not with Mrs. DC, but there are things in my life where it got hard. Hard. And I thought, I can't do this anymore. And that's why you have to take time when that happens to really go into your room, turn off the TV, turn off the music, and remember why you're a king. Remember why you're a queen. Remember why you can persevere. Because you can't get through challenges. I've gotten through a lot of challenges in my life, a lot of hard times, a lot of hard times but I was able to get through it. And you can too. Each of you, anybody who's gone through a hard time, you can get through it. You can. Any other questions? What made you practice this stuff? Because when I was in high school, I went to California for college, but I have no family down here, and it's just here. Why do you want to go to California? Because that's what I want to school. Berkeley, okay. The reason why, and you're doing it for the right reason, I think you have to really think, if you're gonna go somewhere, you need to make sure that you have family, that you have friends, that you have somebody who knows where you're going, what you're doing, who you're around. You can't go somewhere by yourself without informing others about what you're doing because they need to call on you, they need to encourage you, they need to check on you. If you're going to school there, I say do it. If you want to go to Berkeley and that is your highest dream, 
then you make sure that you're spending time in the library and you're getting the grades because Berkeley is a very competitive university and you have to prepare today for what you're doing tomorrow. So if you want to go to Berkeley, I say go for it. But you have to make sure that you have community service on your resumes to prepare for college, that you're helping others, that you're well-rounded, that you're involved in organizations that Cardozo High School offers, and that you're making good grades. And it's a lot of work, but it pays off. I have one more question. One more question, no more? No more? I have a question. Yeah. Why does your story matter? My story matters because I am a Hispanic woman that had challenges and I was still able to overcome them to do the things that I wanted to do and be successful in life. That even though people told me, you'll never do it, you can't do it, you won't do it, you're not smart enough, you're not good enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not, I have heard every I can't that anybody can be told, but I still did it. I still did it, and so if I can do it, despite being told I can't, if I can do it despite having challenges, then you can do it too. Each and every one of you can do it. I believe in y'all. Okay. Yeah, let's give it up for Ms. DC, please. I, I need y'all to do a little bit. Let's give it up for Ms. DC, please. And so, kind of to really bring it home, she shared her story with you all today. Not to feel good about herself, but to give back to you. Because there are moments and there are times when people are going to tell you that you're not good enough, that you're not going to make it, and you can't be anything. But the reality is that you are. And it definitely takes the belief in yourself. So the idea of your story mattering starts with you. So start believing that. And let's give it one more time for Miss DC. Go ahead. 
Alright, now let's clap it up, y'all. Thank you.